This episode is brought to you by my one and only food and mood journal. This is an eight week food and mood journal and planner for beginners where you can track how food affects your mood, your hunger and your energy levels. Are you sick and tired of promising yourself to stop binge eating? Do you feel out of control with food and you just don't know why you overeat? You might have intense cravings leading to self-sabotage. My food and mood journal is the perfect tool to help you tune into your signals that your body sends you. And by tracking what you eat and drink will help you give insight on how food affects your moods. This is an eight-week kickstart to mindful eating to help you identify the triggers that make you want to eat when you're not physically hunger. So this includes a food tracker, a mood and stress tracker, because we know that stress eating can also lead to overeating. We also have an eight week goals tracker with journal prompts and affirmations. You'll also track things like your water intake and exercise. It makes a beautiful gift for anyone who feels out of control with food. It's an easy to use journal and it will give you just the insights to help you get on the path to stop binge eating, emotional eating, or any other form of overeating. So get your food and mood journal today by clicking the link in the show notes. Thank you. Welcome to Beyond Overeating by Wholesome Lifestyle Projects, the overeating podcast where I'll be showing up weekly to share with you what I've learned during my binge eating recovery, helpful tools such as yoga, mindfulness and energy medicine. My name is Stel and my purpose is to inform and educate so that you can fast track your recovery in healing your relationship with food and finally trust yourself around the peanut butter jar. Join me as I share top tips, my struggles and triumphs to help inspire or just entertain. Remember, there is nothing wrong with you if you can't stop overeating. That's why I'm here to guide you. Welcome back to another episode of the Beyond Overeating podcast, my lovely. If you are joining me here, that means that you are currently struggling with your relationship with food and your body. Maybe you are overpowered by uncontrollable binge eating. And I understand 100% what that is like. And today I really wanted to just let you know that first of all, you are not alone and I'm here to support you on this journey. So my name is Stalcum Heath. I'm a binge and emotional eating recovery specialist. And today I wanted to share with you a few steps into self-love, seeing that it's the month of February. And um, this is just a great way for us to really connect to um, some self-love. And this does not mean that you have to radically fall in love with yourself and be obsessed with yourself, but a little bit of self-love goes a long way. And with that comes a bit of self-compassion and kindness, just a way to support yourself through this amazing, amazing month of love. And, you know, we are all beings of love and kindness. That is our true nature. However, we get so distracted with our thoughts of being trying to be perfect, our thoughts of having a perfect body, that we sometimes lose our way. So look at self-love as more just a little way for you to fill your soul cup and just invest in yourself in a small, small little way. So self-love has kind of in the past deemed itself as you know having a quite a negative reputation there's also the fact that you know sometimes we think that if we 
spend any time on ourselves, then that is seen as selfish. And that's the story we start telling ourselves that I don't, I'm too busy. I don't have time. I don't have time to exercise. I don't have time to go to the shops and buy my groceries, all the foods that I want to eat. I don't have time to take a break. I don't have time to manage my stress. I, and the list goes on. So we start telling ourselves these stories and unfortunately we believe these stories and eventually we, we can burn ourselves out. We need some time to nurture ourselves and sometimes that means turning inwards, sometimes that means just reflecting, reconnecting with your body. We live so much in the headspace that we often forget that there is a body and self-care is a way for us to reconnect with our bodies, especially if you're struggling with eating issues. There's this absolute disconnect with the body. Um, so here is just a few ways for you to really get back into some self-care activities. So self-care is you know, it doesn't have to be complex. It can be as simple as a mindful cup of tea at the end of the day or midday or whatever the case is. And I like to use the analogy that we always get on the airplane. You know, the first thing they tell you is in the event that something happens, put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you help others. And this is true for um, our lives and our bodies. We um, tend to think that if we outstretch ourselves and we keep helping others, that um, we will feel, obviously we, we feel fulfilled in doing that. But unfortunately, the only person at the end of the day that looks after you is you, you know? So you're the only one that lives with your body and your mind to 24-7. And see this as your way of just putting that oxygen mask on for yourself and helping you to connect with yourself. And I know that sometimes self-care might be something that we're not used to. It's definitely not um, something to fade away from or shame away from. I think it should actually be something that we are proud of, you know, like really pampering ourselves. So when we feel neglected consciously or unconsciously, that's often when we can actually lean towards food. Or maybe we are just so wrapped up in our world, so thinly stretched, that that is one of the reasons why we um, lean to food in the first place or we've started binge eating in the first place. So when we start to... Um, bring self-care in it allows us to slow down and really reflect um, on ourselves it gives our bodies and minds just a time to relax so here are just a few things that you can or a few ideas that you can start implementing from a self-care perspective now every person is different so I don't want you to think that I'm giving you a whole damn list and you need to go and follow through with everything <laughs> obviously this is your body your life you you want and you feel nourished in your own unique way so make sure that you find ways that you can uniquely nourish yourself and when I work with my clients we actually put together personal nourishment menus for them and that really helps to support them in the times when they feel like their binge eating is completely out of control so the first step is to go and indulge in some pampering and as I said before pampering does not have to be a whole day at the spa it can be as small as a 10 minute walk if you hardly ever have time to to walk it might be a mindful tea break it might be buying yourself a a, a bunch of flowers or it might be buying yourself um, a nice flavored tea that you might might enjoy something that fills your cup you know and then schedule in the bigger events when you have more time so if a massage really helps you feel amazing and just um, great in your body then make sure to schedule those in your calendar when you do have time 
um, make sure that you pamper yourself with some time off. You know, if you can take um, a half day somewhere or even just going away for the weekend, step away from your environment, uh, that could be amazing as well. So hubby and I, we, Wayne is um, my husband's name and Wayne and I, we love to go camping, for example. And that really gives us time to switch off um, and to get away, spend some time in nature, reconnect with each other, but also just have that time for um, reconnecting with ourselves in a way too. So sometimes we will chat for hours and other times we'll be reading our books quietly together. <laughs> but that for us is really just how we kind of fill our, our soul cups. So Think of something that you can do that will actually help you um, connect with yourself as well. And the second way, um, a second thing in self-care, and this is probably more important than anything else, is to stop comparing yourself to others. When you compare yourself to someone else, you take away that feeling of being complete and we lean into, um, into lack mentality. So we step away from love, our um, ultimate essence, um, and we step into fear, the fear of not being accepted, the fear of not looking like so-and-so, the fear of not fitting into so-and-so size pants because that's what's popular, um, or you know, the fear of not being accepted just for, for who we are. But the more we compare ourselves, the more we lean into the negative fears instead of just being at home with yourself. So comparison can be such a killer for us when it comes to our bodies, when it comes to our relationship with food. And this can um, actually be triggering when it comes to binge eating um, or purging or whatever the case is for you. So focus on things that uplift you, focus on you, focus on what makes you feel better instead of leaning into, well, what is everyone else doing? So make space for yourself, understand who you are. It's almost like you almost have to fall in love with who you are once more so that you can actually understand yourself, what you like, um, and feel more comfortable in your own skin. The next one is to let go of perfectionism. Allow yourself to make mistakes. Mistakes are just a part of the journey. And I like to compare this to when, when you were a baby, right? You started learning how to walk somewhere along the line. And you probably tried thousands and thousands of times where you got up and you fell back down and you got up and you fell back down. And through that process, you never gave up. You allowed yourself to make those mistakes, those wobbles. And that's how your muscles developed and helped you to find that proprioception so that you could start walking um, eventually. So mistakes are ways for us to learn. And I, I feel like sometimes we are so trying to be perfectionist when it comes to our eating and our relationship with food that eventually it's just too much. And we actually then give up. So allow yourself to make mistakes. I mean, Thomas Edison um, had a thousand tries before he invented or got perfected the light bulb. So can you imagine if he just gave up? It would have been uh, just, just crazy. So see mistakes as a way with learning. And especially if that comes to food, I actually don't think that there are any mistakes with food. We just seem to um, create all these rules and those rules take us into the mistakes um, of, you know, of, you know, mistakes, I'm putting that in inverted commas, of binge eating or losing control with food. I think the only mistake we make with food is to judge ourselves and to judge our food choices and to add blame and shame and guilt once we've eaten something. So take that away, let it go and bring yourself into a more of a compassionate space. All right. 
And another way we can start looking at self-care, the fourth little tip here is to start paying attention, awareness in what you think, your thoughts. And this one is so important because it's our thoughts that drive an emotional response, which then drives our behavior. So for example, if you are feeling, um, say, say there's a deadline at work, so that's a situation. Your thoughts are, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna get this done. Oh my gosh, I am just, um, I'm so worried because um, so-and-so hasn't given me what, what I needed and we are gonna be late, which means there might be financial in, in, um, consequences or my um, promotion might be riding on this. And all that means is, I'm going to be seen as a failure or I'm going to have egg on my face. And so those are the thoughts that kind of run in your mind. The emotional response here is stress, right? So we stress because of this, this deadline and everything that's, um, that's riding on this deadline. And what happens then is we feel um, uncomfortable in the body. So stress, for example, creates a lot of physical manifestations such as um you know bloated stomachs um stomach cramps also just feeling constricted in the stomach maybe you feel like you can't breathe um maybe you in pain because your neck and shoulders are rounded to the front so all of a sudden you now have a physical manifestation of this emotion called stress and then we um we behave from this emotional space and this behavior might be um, shutting out the world. It might be distracting yourself with food. It might be um, numbing out with um, social media or Netflix, procrastination, um, food again. <laughs> so can you see how our thoughts can actually drive us into a massive panic instead of going, okay, there's a deadline. Here are the steps that I'm going to take to make sure that I am on time. Here are the people I'm going to manage so that I can manage expectations. I have got this. There is enough time. We can do this. So managing the thoughts in a different way is how you can start doing that. And um, so hopefully that is just a small example of um, how you can start shifting your thoughts into a more rational thinking. If we can manage our thoughts, we can start managing our food urges as well because that's about awareness. The last one I wanted to talk about here is your relationship with your body. Um, and I understand that our relationship with our body is a very, very complex thing. So self-love can be quite, quite... <laughs> Uh, what is the word uncomfortable when it comes to our bodies and I 100% understand this going through years and years and years of this love-hate relationship with my body but being more accepting of your body can actually help you feel more comfortable in your own skin can help you feel more free and it can also um, in many cases actually stop the binge restrict triggers so uh, there's a little three-step process that I like to do with regards to body, body acceptance. Um, I'm not saying you have to love your body right now, um, I, but accepting your body goes a long way emotionally to just feel better with yourself. So the first step here is awareness. Be aware of the thoughts and the beliefs you have created about your body and maybe yourself. Notice how those affect your, your thoughts. Um, witness how certain memories of events, certain people who might have said something, um, how these memories have actually led you to build these beliefs around your body and this dissatisfaction with your appearance. So when we witness these biases, we can bring light to things that no longer serves us. And one thing that no longer serves us is completely always judging ourselves. 
It doesn't put us in a great space. It takes us back into that lack, that fear mentality. And that's unfortunately um, not going to be serving us at all. So in the words of Tony Robbins, forgiveness is a gift you give yourself. And that is step two of the process. So step one is just being aware of what's going on in the mind. Step two is then to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for the beliefs you have built around your body. And then forgive others. If there's anyone else that has led you to, be, to this point um, and has led you to these body beliefs, you know, a lot of my clients, their beliefs were not their own. Their beliefs came from their watching their mums, seeing, speaking about themselves in the mirror and saying, I am fat, I'm ugly, whatever the case is. And they took on that belief for themselves. They adopted it as if it was their own. So here's a little forgiveness ritual that you can do. Um, and for this, you're going to need about 15 to 20 minutes. So give yourself time, create a little space, light a candle, and make sure to have pen and paper um, with you. So if you want, you can also put on some nice healing music, like the um, like ocean sounds. That's really going to help you just feel uh, feel connected. I'd like for you to just light a candle and gently find a comfortable seat. And using your pen and paper, write a little forgiveness letter to yourself the and the situations or anyone who has influenced your negative relationship with your body. And then once you've done that, really close down your heart. Breathe in for five counts, breathe out for five counts. And just imagine yourself standing in an ocean and let these things that you need to forgive, imagine the ocean gently washing this away, washing away everything, all these beliefs, all these thoughts, it's gently melting away into nothingness and then say the words I forgive you as many times as you need saying I forgive you to yourself you can bring your hand on your heart say I forgive you I forgive you Stel for pinching my hips and saying negative things about my body I forgive you Stel for always hating what you see in the mirror or whatever you want to bring to that forgiveness statement. This is your process. And then what I'd like for you to do is gently just notice an a cord, like a cord coming out of your body. Uh, what, and this is what we call an energetic cord. This energetic cord is this energy of the self-hatred, the body shame, the body bias, the judgment. Imagine this cord pulling away from your body. See this cord. And I would like for you to imagine having golden scissors or a golden sword in your hand and gently cut that cord, release it, let it step away from you, break all ties from these beliefs. And then just spend a few moments feeling what it feels like to have released and let go whatever was holding you back. Okay. The next step is acceptance. So once you've done that, once you've cut the cords, it's time for us to just bring in something new. And here, what I'd like for you to do is again, take out your pen and paper and write a little letter of gratitude for your body. And I know this can be difficult. So start by focusing on function instead of appearance. So thank your feet for letting you walk through life, your arms for letting you hug your family, um, your eyes for letting you see the beauty in the world. So I'm going to end today's podcast off with a gentle reminder from Louise Hay. And Louise said, 
Remember, you've been criticizing yourself for years and it hasn't worked. Try approving, your, um, try approving of yourself and see what happens. So there you go, my loves. There's quite a few little insights and tips that you can take on as self-care here in February. Um, I hope that you apply these steps as much as you can. So because it's the month of love, there is a self-love challenge that we will run in the days running up to February. So I'll put the link to sign up to the self-love challenge in, it will either be self-love or body love challenge. I am still just putting together the final little bits. So as I record this, um, we, it's still a bit of a secret, but by the time um, this podcast is, uh, is launched on Wednesday, um, you will have somewhere to sign up for February self-love um, or body love, whatever the challenge will be. And uh, exciting announcement, the food zombie challenge will be back. So I'll pop the wait list um, in the show notes. The food zombie challenge starts. Actually, no, I won't pop the wait list. I think that the, the page will be ready to, for you to sign up. So you can sign up. We start on Monday, the 14th of February, Valentine's Day. How awesome is that? I can't wait to see you in the next episode of the Beyond Overeating podcast. As always, thank you so much for listening. Please make sure to share this episode in your Instagram and Facebook stories. And I look forward to catching you next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you so much for joining me today and don't forget to share this with all your friends. You can do this by adding this to your Instagram story and tagging me at Wholesome Lifestyle Project or by simply telling them about it. If you could rate and review on whatever platform you are listening, this will go a long way in helping me get this podcast out there so that I can share my message and help as many women out there struggling with food issues as I can. Don't forget, you can follow me on Instagram on Wholesome Lifestyle Project or connect with me on LinkedIn. My name is Estelle Heath, and that's where you'll find me on LinkedIn. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.